Okay, here's a new video on repairing the bite area of a mouthpiece. This works for our uh, bite plates and metal mouthpieces as well as tooth gouges and hard rubber mouthpieces or plastic mouthpieces. Um, what, I, what I'm going to do is instead of just filling this in with bite plate material, I'm going to actually um, cut out a pocket all around the wear area. The reason I'm doing that is there's actually wear in this bite area. Each mouthpiece is a little different, but there's wear all the way up to here and all the way up down to here. And if I don't create a little pocket, the, the new material filling in will kind of feather out to a very thin point. And sometimes if the adhesion isn't super, it'll flake off. So if you make a pocket and make it a little deeper, it's just a better strategy. Uh, first, I'll clean this off with a little vinegar. Uh, I probably don't need to do this because, uh, you know, when I when I uh, gouge it, it's, it's going to, uh, you know, clean up everything, but it's easy enough to start it this way. Sometimes it just, just to make sure. Stuff, if, if the calcium is uh, really tough, you could resort to some uh, steel wool on it, like this. You can use sandpaper too, but this is more gentle. <coughs> okay, let's go in my other shop where I have the power tools. Okay, here's the... Uh, shape burr I like to use in my uh, variable, variable speed rotary tool. It's foot activated on a flex shaft. Okay, I'm going to switch the burrs to a small one that I like to use to kind of detail the edges. It's a small spherical end. This, mount, this uh, bike plate is made out of hard rubber on links. And it's kind of an old tradition that I think Babbitt still does because this, this is a USA SDM. They may have switched to acrylic, I don't know, but this one smells like hard rubber. Okay, got a little bit of a edge on three sides, and since the gouge went all the way to the edge, I'm going to have to put a piece of tape there to get started. Okay, I'm going to mask off that side with a little bit of masking tape. Creates a little wall there, 
I used to use electrical tape, but it reacts with some of the uh, the monomer that I'm using. It gets all funky. Try to put this in the vise about level. And um, what I use for materials now, that's why I'm doing this video, is to update the materials. I use an acrylic powder. Um, it's almost worn off. I get them from Amazon. Diva was one that I used to use. They're sold for fake nails. This one's called Artisan. Barely can see it. Black acrylic powder. And then the monomer. Um, I have used a, uh, a cheap monomer, but it didn't work so well. It's better to spend a little money and get a real one. Uh, the Sassy is very good. I put it in a little squeeze bottle. Um, the way uh, fingernails, fake fingernails usually um, work with this is they use a brush. And I used to do that also. They take a brush, get it wet with the, the monomer, and then you dip it into the powder like an inkwell and brush it on. But this is, I found this a very forgiving material. allows you to work with it in a number of different ways. So I'm going to start by putting a few drops in there. I waste less material this way, actually. And then I use a little spoon to start filling it in. Once the uh, monomer starts drying up, got to go back and put a couple more drops in. Sometimes I use a brush and um, to smooth it out, but in this case, I, I may not need to. I also sometimes a brush you can drip on the brush, and it better controls where the drops are falling. So. But the brushes get messed up. Not easy to clean. You know, you got to use not necessarily a well ventilated area, but some place where you're not going to breathe the fumes. This monomer uh, the liquid is uh, is uh, more intense than my wife likes. <laughs> it's a basement job, not a kitchen job. And this stuff does shrink a little, so overfilling is a good idea. So the strategy is to overfill it a little on this. Uh, the pink Gardala material, you can almost get it where you don't need to sand it, but it still comes out better if you sand it. I've done rush jobs on that before. Sometimes you can brush it with you know, a wet brush and get it smoother. I've even tried putting um, a piece of uh, clear plastic on it and pressing it down and rolling it with the back of a brush and you can get a closer uh, shape. Um, just gotta plan ahead and have the plastic. I guess I've got one here from doing it that way. 
uh, but then you leave the plastic on and you got to peel it off. But the plastic can get some wrinkles in it and you got to see wrinkles in the bite plate. So still some final finishing is going to be needed. Again, if I'm in a rush job, um, this is, gets pretty hard in 15 minutes, but you can uh, use a heat gun to blow some hot air on it and that'll speed it up a little bit. I prefer to let it set, you know, for 12 hours, but you can reshape it, like I said, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, um, if you need to. Okay, day later, it's set up. Pull the tape off. See, it's a little, a little high. Sometimes you have to put some more on if it's not high enough. So, I'm gonna do the rest of the shaping by hand. Whoops, I can do the rest of the shaping by hand. Um, sometimes I use a power rotary tool to, if I put way too much material on. I'm going to protect the uh, plating with a piece of electrical tape here. Not that this mouthpiece is that pristine, but I don't want to mess it up anymore. Um, Get my big file to start with. Where are you, big file? I took it out and laid it down, that's why. I'm using a different camera mount and my phone, so it's going to wiggle a little bit because it's mounted to the table that I'm vibrating on. I could clamp it somewhere else. Why don't I do that? I have a chair next to me. So, okay, this should be a little better. The might vibrate from the floor. But. So, uh, I'm going to do this in real time because uh, you need to get a feel for how long this may take. Um, I have something called a file card here, which is used to clean files because uh, stuff will sometimes clog, clog up your file. This is a See if I can find the number on it. It's called a double O file. File numbers go from, I believe, double O to O, then two, then four, and the higher the number, the finer they get. And there are coarser files, but I don't have them any coarser than this. I don't know what they're called. For small repairs, you'll get you can get closer than I did on this one. You don't have to overfill it as much. But so this is pretty hard stuff, which is good because that's where your teeth go. And it's not too hard. It's not like metal, but it's about as hard as hard rubber. Maybe a little a little harder. And that's what most bike plates are made out of acrylic. <laughs> the dust has a slight smell like uh, if you've ever worked cutting plexiglass, it's a little bit like that. The plexiglass is a different material, I believe. PBA maybe, something like that. I usually have to Google that stuff, I don't remember it all. OK, 
and it's getting to be the rough shape. I have a little low spot here, but I think that's going to come out. As I lower everything around it. I don't charge a lot for these repairs because it's it's not real technical, it's muscle work. So usually it's $25. This is pretty extensive for 25 bucks. A whole replacement and maybe 50, 40 if it's a little smaller pocket. And some people say, well, no, I just want a replacement. That sounds better than a repair. But if your rest of your bite plate is held in there really tight, it's better not to mess with it and just go for the repair, in my opinion. Yeah, if you don't want to see all this, you fast forward. I can't fast forward, but you can. Okay, now I work myself down in files. I have one here. What's this one? Yeah, I just grab them. This one's marked as an O. Different shape, but a little smoother. It's a little smaller. It's a barrette, barrette shape which isn't important, any flat file. Again, this can be doesn't isn't just for a bite plate. This works well on a if you've got a hard rubber or plastic mouthpiece. I do the same stuff. Hey, some people say, why not use epoxy, putty? You can, but you it's not good under the teeth. You'd have to use a bite plate, a bite patch over it for sure. If that doesn't bother you, okay. But acrylics just a better material. And I like this powder better than, than my older videos that show me using this uh, kind of a more liquidy syringe because that liquidy stuff gets bubbles in it. And while you're working it, you get halfway down sometimes and a bubble will open up and you got to touch it up. Other than that, it was a good material, maybe a little softer than this after it cures, but that was more of an acrylic based adhesive.
So uh, we're still doing some shaping work, but right after this, it's gonna be roughly to the right shape. We're gonna be more doing finishing work, just trying to get the scratches out of it. Still might do some minor shaping if there's any high spots, but. And the next file I have, this should be a two. It is, I got a two there, it's hard to read. So I uh, had put some magic marker in there years ago and Now this this edge, I had tape against this edge. It's it's a little rough. Do some shaping on that. Trying to avoid messing up any of the plating. Dragging my thumb. Nail on it as a test. Yeah, there's a piece of very thin material came up. Now that's the original hard rubber from here over, from here this way. It's a layer of hard rubber and then the acrylic underneath it. But where the uh, thin layer of acrylic was over the hard rubber, it just flaked right off. It was very thin. Trying to make sure this edge of the repair material is flush with the hard rubber all around the perimeter of the repair. You know, if you're, if you're worried about shape, you can try to lay straight edges across it, but usually looking by eye is good enough. Okay. So this might scuff it up a bit, but the next I go to is a fairly coarse sandpaper. This is 220 grit and um, it'll do some shaping still but the nice thing is it conforms to the shape of the bite plate being a large piece of paper. So it'll do a combination of shaping and finishing. But it leaves, it'll leave scratches, so you start course and we're going to work our way to fine. In a factory, what they would normally use is a belt sander. I have one of those, but belt sander is, will mess up your mouthpiece royally and you'll have to get it replate it or just live with it like that. Okay, next I gotta switch to I don't have any fresh sandpaper here. I've got little pieces that I cut up ahead of time for use. So that's a 320 grit. So what you're doing with this grit, there's almost no shaping, but you're getting the scratches out of the, the 220 out. 
and then maybe we'll do a little shaping on this edge. Yeah, it's doing a nice job on that. Very slight rounding of the edge so it's not sharp. Nice and smooth. Smooth shape, not smooth finish yet. So then we move on to a uh, 400 grit. Yep, nice edge. Last uh, paper that I use is a 600. You can keep going finer, but I usually don't need to go any finer than 600. So you can see, start seeing the repair pretty clearly where you know, I have an edge here, but there was a low spot a little further, so there is a little bit of a feathered part of the repair back there. Teeth will not get up there, though, normally, so the rest of this has a pretty nice defined edge between the repair material and the original hard rubber. Okay, after 600, I go to a 4.0 steel wool. tape off, a little bit of glue, Last 
thing I do with this bench is I bring out my polishing compound, small rags cut up. This is similar to like an automotive polishing compound. Just get a little dab of this. Slightly abrasive paste. So all you're really trying to do is get out the uh, steel scratches from the steel wool, which is pretty fine. You can just leave it with the steel wool. It's very functional. This is just to make it pretty. And after you rub that in for a while, you get a clean part and you buff it. I could take it to a buffing wheel next. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't but it's pretty good the way that is now. It's a pretty nice repair.